part of the course, we are going to talk about the carbon-13 NMR determination of tacticity in polymers and also of some statistic models of propagation. Stereoisomerism in polymers arise from different spatial arrangements or configurations of the atoms or substituents in a molecule. Geometric isomerism arises from different configuration of substituents on a double bond or on a cycle structure, giving cis or trans configurations. Enantiomers arise from different configuration of substituents on a saturated carbon or other atom. Both can be detected by carbon-13 NMR. The polymerization of a monosubstituted alkene where R can be any substituent, leads to polymers in which every other carbon atom is a pseudochiral center. In small molecules, these configurations are called R and S, but in polymers, this nomenclature is not adequate. The regularity in the configuration of successive pseudochiral centers determines the overall order or tacticity of the polymer chain. Isotactic is a polymer in which each repeating unit has the same configuration. All the substituents in the chain are located on one side of the plane of the main chain. Syndiotactic is a polymer in which each repeating unit alternates the configuration. The substituents are located alternately on the opposite sides of the plane of the polymer chain. Atactic is a polymer in which the pseudochiral centers are distributed randomly. The knowledge of the tacticity in polymers is very important because it is related with their properties. Atactic polymers are, in general, amorphous and have low physical resistance. On the other hand, isotactic and syndiotactic polymers are crystalline. The most important example of polymer that presents tacticity is polypropylene. Isotactic polypropylene has high melting point, around 160 degrees. It's crystalline, it is used as thermoplastic or fiber, and has high industrial production. Syndiotactic polypropylene is also crystalline, but with lower melting point than the isotactic polypropylene, around 140 degrees, and is also more soluble in ether and hydrocarbons. Atactic polypropylene is an amorphous material used in blends and in formulation for sealants and adhesives. This strong relation of the molecular structure with properties explains the importance of the study of the degree of tacticity in polymers. And the best technique to calculate the stereoregularity in a polymer is undoubtedly carbon-13 NMR. When we have n units in a sequence, the possible stereo sequences are 2 power n minus 1, but the real observed stereo sequences in NMR are 2 power n minus 2 plus 2 power n minus 2 divided 2, if n is even, or 2 power n minus 2 plus 2 power n minus 3 divided 2 if n is odd. Considering a diet where the number of units are 2, there are two possible and observed stereo sequences that are the one shown in the figure. One is the meso diet in which the consecutive units have the same configuration and the other is the racemic diet in which 
the consecutive units have the opposite configuration. They are normally called M and R. In a triad sequence, the possible stereo sequences are four, MM, MR, RM, and RR, and the observed three. This is because the carbon of the stereo sequences MR and RM are not distinguishable by NMR. They appear at the same chemical shift, but the integral is the double of the integral of the MM or RR sequences. Depending on the NMR magnetic field, the methane assigned in this figure can have the resolution of triad, pentad, or heptad. When we have a sequence of four units, a tetrad, the possible stereo sequences are eight, and the observable, six, as it can be seen in this figure. The asymmetric stereo sequences, MMR or RRM, are not distinguishable of RMM or MRR. In the figure, it is shown the example of the MRM stereo sequence. For the pentad, the possible stereo sequences are 16 and observable 10, calculated by the previous equations. And they are the ones shown in the figure. Here, as example, it is also shown the MRRM tetrad. The resolution of triad, pentad, etc. depends on the magnetic field, that means the equipment used. We can see in the first figure six spectra of polypropylene with different tacticities taken at 25 MHz for the carbon, that is, in a 100 MHz equipment. The polypropylene unit has three types of carbon. The CH2, that appears around 46 ppm, the CH at 28 ppm, and the methyl group around 20 ppm. It can be seen that each signal has a splitting of lines, especially the methylene and the methyl carbons. This splitting is due to the different configurations or tacticity. The methyl group is the one that shows the best resolution in the splitting. That is why it is used to study polypropylene tacticity. In sample 5, it can be seen clearly that the methyl is represented by three signals with an intensity of 1, 2, 1. This example is, is of a typical a tactic polypropylene where all the stereo sequences are in about the same amount. The first peak represents the MM triad, the second the sum of MR or R NRM dyads, and the third the syndiotactic triad RR. In the other spectra, those three peaks varied in proportion depending on the percentage of isotactic, atactic, and syndiotactic triads. Even though in example three, it can be seen some superior stereo sequences, higher than three, the resolution of all these spectra is of a triad resolution. In the next figure, it can be seen three spectra of polypropylene taken at 50 megahertz, that is, in a 200 megahertz equipment. The resolution is much better, and in the case of the methyl carbon in the spectrum above, the three triad peaks are still splitting, giving a pentad resolution. The sequence of each methyl signal is over the peak and also in the table. In equipment with a higher magnetic field, it is possible to see heptad and nonad sequences, as it can be seen in this spectrum, taken at 150 megahertz for the carbon, that is, in a 600 megahertz equipment. The calculus of the tacticity is easily done through the area 
or integrals of the peaks. In this case, the quantitativity is assured due to that the carbon used is always the same, the methyl. Tacticity can be given in percentage of triad or pentad, but also in dyad using this equation. In this table, it can be seen in more detail the chemical shift of each region of the dyad, triad, and pentad resolution. Even though the polypropylene regions of each sequence in polypropylene has been published, it is not always easy to delimit these areas because the chemical shift can vary with the solvent, the reference, or other conditions used in the analysis. Sometimes it's easier to take typical spectra as example to define the areas. Here there are two examples of polypropylene spectra. In A, there is an isotactic polypropylene, and in B, there is a syndiotactic. As example, here we have an spectrum of an atactic polypropylene taken in a 300 MHz equipment. Here we have the expansion of the methyl carbon spectrum. In this spectrum, we can see some pentads, but we can do without problem the calculus of the triads stereosynthesis. Using the integral of each triad, we calculate the molar fraction dividing each area by the total area and multiplying the molar fraction by 100, we obtain the triad percentage. We can also obtain the diet percentage using the equation related the diet with the triads. In this case, we have an atactic polypropylene with 41.8% of isotactic diet and 58.2% of syndiotactic diets. This is a spectrum of an isotactic polypropylene made in a 300 MHz equipment. To study tacticity, we need to expand the methyl region. Here we have the expansion of the methyl region of an isotactic polypropylene. The main resonance corresponds to the MMMM pentad. Then there are other minor resonance that correspond to other pentads that have been assigned in the spectrum. For the calculus of tacticity, we have to take the integral of each pentad region, obtain, obtain the molar fraction, adding all the integrals, and dividing the integral of each resonance by the total integral. Then, if we multiply by 100, we obtain the percentage of each pentad. If we want to have the percentage in triads, we just add the percentage of the pentad centered in MM to obtain MM. The percentage of the pentad centered in MR and RM to obtain the triad MR plus RM. And the percentage of pentad centered in RR to obtain the triad RR. To have the diet percentage, we use the equation that relates diets with triads. In this example, we have in diets a polypropylene 91.4% isotactic. In this figure, we have a, the spectrum of a syndiotactic polypropylene taken in a 300 MHz equipment. Here we have the expansion of the methyl region with the assignment for each pentad in accordance with the literature. In the table, we can see the integrals of the, of the pentad from which we are calculated the molar fraction of each pentad and then the percentage. In the same way that with the isotactic polypropylene, we can also obtain the percentage of triad from the pentad centered in MM, MR plus RM, and RR and then the diet through the equation relating diets with triads. 
all the polymers with a pseudochiral atom can present tacticity. In general, all the vinyl polymers with one substituent have stereosomers. As in the case of polypropylene, the carbon atom used to study tacticity is the alpha carbon adjacent to the tertiary carbon. Here we can see carbon-13 NMR spectra of three poly-1 disin with different tacticities, atactic, isotactic, and syndiotactic. The carbon that are more influenced by the configuration are carbon-7, 8, and alpha-alpha, as it can be seen in the spectra. However, the lines are more clearly split in carbon-8, that is the carbon that is alpha from the carbon of the branching. Here we have the expansion of the spectra of in carbon-8 region in the assignment. As it can be seen, the penta resolution is not clear, as it was with polypropylene. Anyway, there is some penta as the isotactic MMMM or syndiotactic RRRR that can be taken off from the others to have an idea of tacticity. The calculus of tacticity of polystyrene by carbon-13 NMR was also studied. The carbon atom used for the disdetermination is also the carbon alpha from the methane carbon. In this case, it's an aromatic carbon. Here we can see the expansion of the region of this aromatic carbon and the presence of stereosequences. These stereosequences have been assigned as it is shown in the table. There is some sequences with pentad resolution as the isotactic ones named as A, B, and C. The heterotactic pentads appear superposed and the syndiotactic sequences has only the trial resolution. The trials can be calculated being the MM, the sum of A, B, and C areas, the heterotactic MR plus RM, the sum of D and E, and the RR area of F. This spectrum is from a polyestyrene 70% isotactic. In this figure, we can see the carbon-13 NMR spectrum of the aromatic carbon-1 of an atactic poly polystyrene. In the case of atactic polystyrene, the separation between the regions D and E is not well defined so they are used areas of region D-line and E-line. The same treatment already used with the isotactic example can be used here. We are going to return again to polypropylene that is one of the polymers most studied due to its great economic importance. Carbon-13 NMR can also give us information about the mechanism of polymerization. We have to remember that the chain polymerization is statistic. There are two main models for the mechanism of the isotactic polymerization. An anthiomorphic site in which the stereoregularity is controlled by the catalyst. In the case of isotactic polypropylene, if one polypropylene unit is inserted with the methyl group up, the geometry of the catalyst will, will control the insertion. So the next unit will be inserted also up. In this way, we can have a mesodiet. In the case that a first unit is inserted with the methyl group down, the next unit must have the same configuration, so it will be inserted also down to obtain an isotactic diet M. As the polymerization is statistic, it can occur some errors, and thanks to them, we can know more about the mechanism. 
In the isotactic polymerization, all the units should add to the growing chain with the same configuration. That means always up or always down. So, if we have a chain in which all the units are up, there is an, there is an error and a unit enter down. The catalyst immediately corrects this error, making the next unit to enter up again. This will give sequences of the type MMM, RR, MMM. That means 2R between M. This works like a fingerprint in the NMR spectrum. This model is described mathematically by the Bernoulli statistic, and the equations for the dial are shown here. The other model is called chain end because the stereo regularity is controlled by the last inserted monomer unit. So, in this case, in the isotactic polymerization, if we are having all the unit being up and there is an error and the next unit is down, as the control is by the last unit, the next unit will continue with the same configuration of the last one. So, we are going to have sequences with only one R between M. This model is described mathematically by the Markov statistic. Here we can see a typical spectrum of isotactic polypropylene methyl region showing the enantiomorphic site mechanism. The main resonance is due to MM. M -M pentad, that is the normal sequence for an isotactic polypropylene. The other minor peaks show the error of this type of mechanism. Those pentads are MMMR, MMRR, and MRRM. The intensity of a symmetric pentad is twice the symmetric one. Here are shown the equations of the Bernoulli statistic, typical of the enantiomorphic site mechanism. Sigma is the probability that a new monomer is added up. One minus sigma is the probability that the new monomer is added down. In the isotactic propagation, the dyad probability is Pm that is equal to the probability up multiplied by the probability up plus the probability down multiplied by the probability down. That it is equal to sigma squared plus one minus sigma squared. The same type of reasoning is done with the probability to have a racemic diet, PR. But in this case, the probability up and down are multiplying and added giving two sigma multiplying by one minus sigma. The same treatment is done with the triad and superior sequences. The probability to have a triad MM is equal to the probability up power three plus the probability down power three and so on. Here it is shown the Markov statistic, typical of the control by the last unit, the chain end mechanism. In this case, PUU is the probability that a unit up adds to a growing chain terminated in an unit up. PDD is the probability that a unit down adds to a growing chain terminated in down. PUD is the probability that a unit down adds to a growing chain terminated in a unit up. PDU is the probability that a unit up adds to a growing chain terminated in down. The probability PUU is equal to the probability PDD and equal to the, to the probability of the mesodiad PM defined as sigma. 
the probability of the racemic diet, PUD and PDU, are equal to 1 minus sigma. The probability of triad are obtained adding one more unit. Being the probability to have an MM triad equal to sigma squared, the probability to have a RR triad equal to 1 minus sigma squared, and the probability to have an heterostatic triad 2 sigma multiplied by 1 minus sigma. In the table is shown the result of the calculus of the tacticity of an isotactic polypropylene from the integrals of the carbon-13 NMR spectrum of the methyl region from 22 to 21.6 ppm. There are also shown the pentads, triads, and dyads of the corresponding molar fractions. We want to know if the polymerization follows the enantiomeric site or the chain end mechanism. How we can do that? We are going to use the equation of each statistic to find the mechanism. First of all, we use the calculated value of molar fraction for the dyad M N R obtained from the integral to substitute the probabilities of the meso and racemic diet PM and PR in both statistic models. We use these values to find sigma and 1 minus sigma in both statistics as it is shown in the figure. Now we use these values to calculate the probabilities of triads MM, MR, NRR in both statistics. For simplicity, we write MR, but that means the sum of MR plus RM. Then we compare those results with the experimental triads obtained from the spectrum. We can see in this example that the results of the statistics are closer to the ones obtained by the enantiomorphic site mechanism. For more information about these topics, you can see the following references.